Well, it's been a whirlwind week politically, and the guy that made the most wind is here this evening. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. You know, it was so funny. I, uh, I went through the front door of the building today. I usually don't, but long story as to why I did. Um, actually, not really. didn't have my passcode, so I had to go in the front door. And who do I walk in with my guest this evening, uh, who I introduced to the boss who's walking out as the, I picked Senator. I, I could have picked mayor, I could have picked senator, I could have picked governor, I could have picked presidential candidate. Uh, I could Now I can pick senatorial candidate again. Uh, he is no stranger to Rhode Island, and he has once again um, caused a lot of chatter. Link Chafee is in the house, and I'm looking forward to hanging with him here momentarily. It is a pleasure to have you aboard on this Thursday evening. Uh, just a, a couple of notes, though, on this flap yesterday with the Speaker of the House. And, uh, I just think it, it, it needs one more review. The headline on the front page of the journal today, uh, or their website as the case may be there, Matty Yellow is ordered to repay $72,000 to a leadership PAC. A PAC is a public, uh, a political action committee, and it's formed for larger uses of leadership and some would say power right and influence on the issues and the speaker of the house has a pack that has a few hundred thousand dollars in it and his own committee to reelect commonly known as friends of mattiello perfectly legal he has his own few hundred thousand dollars and i guess over the campaign in 2016 as he was battling to retain his district 15 cranston seat he used uh, or his team used seventy two thousand dollars more than he was allowed on his own behalf out of the pack, the pack is limited to putting a thousand dollars maximum into any one particular candidate's best interest. Uh, so it's well, he put, I, I guess he used seventy-three thousand. His, his his overage is seventy-two thousand uh, dollars. Quite strange, uh, and, and quite an unusual accounting mistake, if you're going to call it that. But that's exactly what he called it yesterday. Out the wrong checkbook. They both had more than enough money in it and we used the wrong account. Uh, the speaker broke the law. You know, the speaker did something illegal to get reelected. People up there who are, uh, are making the law shouldn't also be breaking the law. So that's Brandon Bell, the chairman of the Republican Party here in the state, and he called for the speaker to step down. The only other voice to do that was State Representative Patricia Morgan. This is using his campaign cash inappropriately. So she called for his resignation as well, and the headline here uh, reflects on that. Uh, she, re she, she reported out yesterday that uh, she had a caucus with her fellow Republicans in the House of Representatives, and they concurred with her that Mattiello ought to resign. But we didn't hear a peep, and coincidentally, Alan Fung, who is the Republican mayor of Cranston and running for governor, was in my studio yesterday, and he shot down the idea that she had a team calling for Mattiello's resignation. What I heard is that, you know, no one joined her in that call, and, you know, she apparently just put this out because, you know, that's the first I've heard of Do you of think it. she's a loose cannon? I don't think she's a loose cannon. I think what she's trying to do is distance herself. Cause so there's a whole middle ground, I think, between Nick Mattiello saying, hey, come on, it was a checkbook mistake, and Brandon Bell and Representative Morgan saying, hey, this is a fireable or resignable offense. John Marion, the executive director of Common Cause, I think has been trying to find some reasonability on this. Seeing school committee members, town council members, who have done sloppy bookkeeping, which wasn't right, but they've had to pay out of their personal pocket. $500, $1,000. Sometimes they just make them pay the cost of the postage uh, and the staff time it took to track them down to, to file their reports. He doesn't even have to pay the cost of the postage or the legal fees um, or any of the staff time. He just has to move money from one campaign account to another. It, it's a slap on the wrist. It's not even a slap on the wrist. And, and, and the interesting thing about this whole thing is that simply the Board of Elections ordered and uh, Speaker Mattiello agreed to just replace the money. 
It's no different from you transferring money from a checking into a savings account or vice versa. Here's the problem. If you use a, fu a fund, um, say you, say you uh, deducted money from a 401k erroneously, not with malintent, but did so before you were allowed to, you get hit with fees and fines. That's what should happen here. I don't think Nick Mattiello is dirty. I don't think he was trying to, to, to bypass um, use of his own funds because he had plenty in there. At the same time, sloppy is sloppy, and just reinserting the dough is not penalty enough. And I'm surprised that he even acquiesced uh, to that. More conversation on that over the course of the, of the next few days and weeks, but it um, certainly was a stir. I think you got the whole picture now, right? The other thing that's kind of interesting, in addition to Matt Brown saying he's going to be running for governor, and by the way, he's my guest tomorrow night uh, on the program. He's running as a Democrat, not as an independent, uh, which may have had an influence on my guest decision. I don't know. He'll have to tell me. Uh, Scott Abadesian, the mayor forever, since Mayor Chafee, of course, uh, in Warwick, is uh, moving on to Ripter. You spell it R-I-P-T-A, but you say it Ripter here in Rhode Island. Uh, there's Scott. He's a good guy. I, yeah, I'm sure it was time, and whatever political machinations occurred to get that gig, uh, I'm quite certain that uh, he's probably a very good choice up at, uh, at Ripta. And uh, sometimes it's time to go, especially after 18 years. He had this guy's old seat, and so we welcome Mayor, Senator, Governor. Mm -hmm. How Link, are you, sir? Link is fine. It's great to see you again. Um, reflect on your friend, because I know Scott is a good friend of yours. Uh, thoughts on him moving on? Well, I appointed him to the Ripter board, and uh, he became chair of it. And at that time, Ripter had big difficulties. There was all the uh, union difficulties, the trouble with the cash in the uh, safe room and putting the code over the camera and all that was going on. Remember right, all that? Right, 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 right. All sorts of chaos was going on in Ripta. Mayor Abadesian came in as chair of the board. We got a state police in there, to Ray Studley, to uh, be the CEO, and we turned it around. And so Mayor Abadesian now going to be the now CEO we you makes did that, sense. You did, that, you did that as governor. That's right. He was mayor, but you, had him, you sent, you sent yes. him in there for extra duty. Yes, was an unpaid chair of the board. Right. Uh, yeah, I, I, I see. Actually, if you're going to say, all right, you know, circle somebody who would be a good replacement, it seems like he's completely familiar with it. Any, any reflections on what he leaves behind in the city, uh, your home city of Warwick? Uh, steady leadership over all those years. You don't get elected every two years. It's still a two-year term in Warwick with 80 percent, which uh, Mayor Avedesian does every two years, unless you're doing something right. The, the, the rumor mill, and you know, the rumor mill is always stoking. You've had some fun the last couple of months because you pop on the radio a few times and, uh, you know, throw out a couple maybe would-be, could-be's. Uh, one of the, the percolating under rumors was that uh, Scott would be leaving the mayoralty uh, and that the, uh, the governor would be hoping that you'd be uh, interested in actually going back to the old seat, thus clearing the Democratic primary deck for governor. Was that ever in play? Well, Mayor Avedesian approached me about uh, running for mayor, saying I'm looking at other opportunities to leave uh, as mayor and would I be interested. And I pretty much instantly said no. That chapter of my life, as much as I loved it, I did it for seven years, and I loved it, uh, uh, that, that, that chapter has closed. Would it feel like being in college and going back to high school, in a sense, yeah, politically? Yeah, I won't argue with that. Yeah, that kind of a thing? Yes. Uh, so the whole time, the whole time, we're sitting here thinking that Link Chafee is just fumbling around with the idea, fooling around with it, of running for governor. You've been a Democrat recently. You have considerable uh, critical analysis of the Raimondo administration. What was your contemplation about running for governor? Well, uh, as you know, it wasn't an easy four years, but as we look back on it now, you've got Which to Which four years? Yours? My, yes, as, yeah. as governor. It wasn't yeah. easy. Uh, I came in that Central Christmas tree thing got in the way, didn't it? Christmas tree. All I said was do what they did last year. <laughs> you're still stuck on that. Do what you we'll did leave that one. We'll leave that one. Well, you're true, you're off true. the hook. You're just, you're just, just take you off the hook for that. All right, but anyway. I came in and uh, cities and towns, eight cities and towns, have been cut by Governor Kachiri to the point where Central Falls was going in bankruptcy. Providence was close. Woonsocket was close. East Providence was close. West Warwick was close. Uh, 38 studios was dropped in my lap. We had a $400 million deficit. I mean, I came in in tough, tough times. And uh, state aid to uh, higher education was cut, URI, RIC, and CCRI had to restore that funding to keep those tuitions down. So we rolled up our sleeves, went to work. Uh, 
solve, get the get 38 Studios, didn't why go did for Hood, but why, we got the money why back Why do you think then, you left with such then, low popularity ratings? Why, why do you think that was? It was tough times. It was just tough times. People were out of work. Hmm. Uh, they weren't happy. Uh, the Christmas tree, you know, when you look back on it, how trivial an item, whether you call it a holiday tree or a Christmas tree, been called a holiday tree for the last 10 years or something before I came in, but got boom. Off goes this mushroom cloud. All right, so here you are that. already Even setting the up chase and plow. That was an issue. So you're setting and up I was this, right on that. You're setting up this notion that you that you were thinking seriously about running for governor again. It Absolutely. feels like it's coming yes. off your chest. Yes. yes, yes. I'm proud of my record as governor and uh, wanted to defend it. Okay, but that would, uh, if if a campaign was what it took. All right. So when we come back, we'll find out what happened because we went in a different direction here. Stay with us. All right, so tomorrow night's guest is Matt Brown, the former Secretary of State here, who took a little bit of hiatus in Rhode Island politics, and now has jumped back on the scene and weeks ago talked about running uh, for governor as an independent, and then just this week, uh, in, in fact, I think yesterday, is yesterday, the days running together, but yesterday decided, is, Dick Lex, was it yesterday? Or what, what day? Yesterday, yeah, yesterday that he was going to run uh, for governor as a Democrat. Uh, governor Chafee, Senator Chafee is here made a unique announcement yesterday, but you just spent a, a good amount of time defending your gubernatorial record and saying that you were certainly interested in defending it by running again. Did Matt Brown's Democratic announcement affect what you were thinking? No, no. What happened uh, several months ago, maybe five or six months ago, is some Bernie Sanders supporters, avid, avid Sanders supporters, asked me to go for lunch, and I did, and they were broaching the run for Senate at the time against Sheldon Whiteout. So the time I scratching my head that's a tough run uh, governor I'm thinking about governor and defending my record as governor and then uh, different events occurred the, the vote in the war authorization which I care deeply about using that old 2001 war authorization for these endless wars around the globe uh, and Senator Whitehouse voted the wrong way on that it was a Sanders Lee from Utah Republican from Utah bipartisan bill to say we have to debate each of these military adventures, not use some old resolution from 2001. And Senator Whitehouse voted the wrong way. That caused a lot of the Sanders people, because it was a Sanders resolution, uh, to email me, text me, call me, come on, you gotta think about it. And I care about that issue. National Sanders deeply. people or local Sanders local, people? Local Rhode Island. They were active in his great success in the Rhode Island presidential primary. He carried 35 out of 39 cities and towns no doubt. in Rhode Island. Are they identifiable? The state. Are you identifying who those uh, folks are? No, I have to ask them first, Dan, hmm. if I can do that. So, so you've been. But they were delegates. I'll say they were delegates. You can look at the list of so delegates. So you've been sitting on this perspective. They went I, to uh, Philadelphia Convention. You've been sitting on this perspective idea now for the better part of six months. But the timing of your announcement. I mean, if I'm Matt Brown, I pulled my hair out. I mean, he was looking for a little bit of juice, probably, as a Democratic candidate for governor. And, and right on top of it, you throw out, uh, actually, on the radio, the Terra on WPR yesterday, I'm 90 percent. Uh, you must have gotten to 100 percent in about 18 minutes when everybody dived in and said, or dove in and said, All right, is it true, right? So is it 100 yes. percent you were running It's getting close. It? I've got a lot of good feedback. I wanted to kind of test the feedback, and it's been a, really a good. A 90 percent trial alone. <laughs> yeah. so, okay. It, it's been good feedback. Uh, the people want... Uh, to debate the issues, and unfortunately in this day and age in blue states such as Rhode Island, the primary is the election in for congressional races. Uh, it's, I know painfully from 2006, it's just impossible for a Republican to win. I had 65% approval ratings and I lost just because I had the R next to my name. Rhode Island is not going to send a Republican down to be an anti-choice, pro-war, anti-environment uh, political party in Washington tax cuts to benefit the wealthy. Well, since you're on it. So the primary is where the action is you, you, in congressional races. And I, and I appreciate you talking about it strategically. It, it's a lot more candor than I even got from the Secretary of State, Matt Brown, who's going to get it for me when we talk about it on, uh, on tomorrow's show, because uh, I need straight answers, at least on the politics and on the strategy. I'll uh, give you a straight answer. Uh, no, I, I, so ability. far, so good, Governor, uh, Senator, uh, Mayor. Uh, the, the idea here that the Republican moniker is so problematic in the state. A, do you think that will ever end? Go ahead. Well, I got elected in 2000 as a Republican, and my dad and Arlene uh, and uh, Ron Makeley and Claudine Schneider. Uh, so back then it was possible, but I don't know in the foreseeable future. Uh, 
unless there's just a huge majority of one party or the other. Mm. So it's not in play. What do you it's going to be the committee the, chairs and all that. What do you think about what that? Donald Trump has done uh, to the National Party? Well, it's an age we're in where the establishment is uh, suspect. And that's the success of Bernie Sanders. Uh, they want someone out of the establishment. And it's true with Donald Trump. Uh, the establishment has let us down time and time again. And the people feel that. They, the, the middle class feels that. And uh, they're willing to throw the Molotov cocktail that is Donald Trump into the system. And they did. Does the Republican Party recover from this? And if so, how? Well, the Democrats are good at shooting themselves in the foot. Uh, we nominated Hillary Clinton when we should have nominated Bernie Sanders. We didn't get a sense of this thirst for an outsider. And I think this whole Russian collusion thing is shooting Democrats in the foot. Uh, Meaning they're pushing it too hard? Yeah, yeah. There was no, there weren't 10 people in Wisconsin or Ohio or Pennsylvania that had the Russians tell them how to vote. They were looking at Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton making up their mind. It wasn't, Russians. Well, I don't I think, think it's ever been alleged that the actual vote was uh, was yeah, altered. Of course by, it is. That's by, what by the, the whole witch hunt's well, about. Well, that's not what the well, that's not what the uh, that's not what the investigation is bearing down on. It's Collusion. the attempt. It's the attempt. Uh, no one has asserted that the actual turnout of the election was affected by the Russian okay, intervention. I'll take exception to that. Well, it's just, you okay. know, but I, I I find it interesting that you refer to this as a witch hunt, even though you're probably politically diametrically opposed to most of what Donald Trump is doing. I'm guessing. You're going to join him in suggesting that this thing is a witch hunt. Well, what that I'm is, saying... That is the chafee that I know, <laughs> trying to figure out exactly what your computation you know, what is. What I'm saying is that the mass media that were all... The mainstream media that were all behind Hillary Clinton and the Democratic Party, the whole DNC, was all behind Hillary Clinton. I know from being involved in it, and Senator Sanders supporters would say the same thing. They don't want to look in the mirror and say, we made a mistake. Hillary Clinton was not a good nominee. And instead, we're going off on diversions into Russians. Look in the mirror and say, where did we make this mistake? She had all the email controversies, the Goldman Sachs uh, speeches that she wouldn't disclose what she said to them, the Clinton Foundation, and on and on it went. And uh, Sanders would have won. I, I do believe that. All right, when we come back, what is the bone to pick with Sheldon Whitehouse specifically? Stay with us. So there is the incumbent junior senator, Sheldon Whitehouse, who I'm sure uh, had a little bit of agita yesterday when uh, uh, Link Chafee uh, announced that he's 90 percent there toward his uh, decision to run for U.S. Senate. Uh, I'm thinking I'm f the vibe I'm feeling is like 96, 97 percent right now, uh, less the formality of an announcement. Uh, you're ready to go. Uh, he put out a you know, a, a, a statement suggesting, you know, love it, have everybody in their ideas. I mean, what else is he going to say? Uh, you guys had a battle once. What did you learn from it? Having an R next to your name uh, makes it impossible. At one of our debates, the questioner said, Mr. Whitehouse, answer this question without mentioning President Bush. And he couldn't do it. In the answer came President Bush. It was uh, just too big of an anchor to uh, drag to victory. You say that there is a specific um, a specific qualm that you're going to hit him with during this campaign? Well, there's four of them really uh, right now, uh, but the first one is going to Philadelphia after all of Rhode Island, 35 out of 39 cities and towns, said we want Sanders to be our nominee. Mr. Whitehouse, when Senator Whitehouse went down to a Philadelphia convention and voted for Hillary Clinton, and in fact, when they called the roll for Rhode Island, despite Bernie Sanders winning all across Rhode Island, winning big in Rhode Island, the, the Vote was 20 to 12 for Clinton. Mm -hmm. How does that make the Sanders The electors feel? have their own. Secondly, the, 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 I just want to say the electors have their own right to do that. Do you feel like electors ought to reflect the vote of the popular Absolutely. vote? Absolutely. Why okay. have a primary? Okay. Why have a primary when it's going to be 20 to 12 for, for Clinton? Gotcha. After Sanders wins big and what I was the super delegates. What's number two? Which, uh, the second one is that war resolution vote that was just in March, a few weeks weeks ago, to extend this authorization endless wars, unfettered wars to President Trump. That's infuriating to me. The vote was close. It was 44 votes Sanders and Lee got. It was bipartisan. Republicans were on board. Red state Republicans, but not Senator Whitehouse. The third one is the Boroughville Power Plant. He talks about climate change, but he hasn't opposed the frack natural gas Boroughville Power Plant. And the last one is the fourth issue that I feel strongly about is uh, the wiretapping. The Fourth Amendment 
I'm a big constitutional defender. The Fourth Amendment is clear. Before you tap our phones, get a warrant. And over and over again, Senator Whitehouse has voted to extend these FISA, they call them, uh, the Foreign sure. Surveillance Court, uh, protections for warrantless wiretapping. It, it infuriates well, me. Well, look, I, you know, I, that's I, a good I, amendment, the Fourth Amendment. I Get could, a warrant before you come into I our could, houses. I could engage this debate with you, but we'll let Senator Whitehouse do it. You and I will have conversations, I am sure. I wanted you to lay them out. At least, at least I can say that your four positions that clearly you've thought about coming into this thing are legitimate subjects for debate. Yes. They're not yes. chippy no. issues. No. They are substantial Let's talk about subjects and defend for your position. debate. Yes. I appreciate that. Put up a graphic, if you would, Jess, of, uh, of, of the uh, the resume, of the political resume. You know, Mayor Warwick, and then came in for your dad and got elected, and then uh, successfully ran for governor. Of course, that's when you started to get an itch about the Republican Party and, and went independent, and then you got into this Democratic presidential campaign, and you got your chops busted there a little bit. Um, a little bit. But, but let me ask you this. As, as much as you are a household name, maybe a comfortable shoe, I don't know, or someone that gives you, an, for some it's like occasional agita, because you're the wrong year around, and you've had your, your ups and downs. Is there too much chafee in, 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 in election world right now? Do, do, do you have any feel about that? Did you worry about that? Uh, no, I hear you, but I think there's room for someone that's never had a scandal in 30 years of public service, that comes to work early in the morning, leaves late, works hard, does their job well, as that graphic showed, uh, being a mayor, being a senator, being a governor. Uh, high ethical standards, good work ethic, good judgment. I was right on the Iraq war vote. I was right on 38 Studios. I was right that Secretary Clinton would not be a good nominee over and over again. Everyone was saying, what's Link saying? Uh, I've been vindicated, if you will. Good judgment's important in candidates. And those qualities, I think, are always going to wear well. Inside the Democratic Party, you have now, I think, buoyed uh, by your, your, by, between you and Matt Brown jumping into this primary, you're just taking it from an 80,000 vote primary to 140, 150, 160,000 by your, by your entrance. Guys like Dan McKee are probably clicking their heels because there's a progressive wing that is fractured with the, uh, an old-fashioned Democratic wing. Where will you sit in this? I get the Bernie Sanders thing, but will you be labeled or take on the brand of progressive uh, so that there's an identity politics here from the state house to this race? Who are you now? Well, the Sanders people, uh, ad the advocates that worked hard for him in the Rhode Island presidential primary were the first to contact me. So there's some overlap there. Will you be calling yourself like a progressive? What will you be calling yourself in this day and age of branding? I'm not uh, one to flip flop all over the place. Yes, I've changed political parties, but I've never changed. You know, believe in using the tools of government to build the middle class. I believe in protecting our constitutional liberties. I believe in fiscal responsibility. And that's you can look at my okay. record. I believe in environmental stewardship. That those qualities just haven't changed over I, my long career. And I believe so. I'll out, be the same person. And I believe we're out of time, but we look forward to having you uh, uh, with a dialogue. You certainly made it an interesting week. Thank you, sir. Link Chafee you. is back in the hunt. Final word next. I have to tell you, that is the most uh, exacting, articulate, lucid, on target, on message, on point conversation I've ever had with Link Chafee. Sheldon the White House better get his game going. We'll see you tomorrow night for uh, the next gubernatorial candidate, Matt Brown. See you on the radio at 3, too. Bye.